Hello, everyone, and welcome to a new Pennywise podcast. We're happy to have you with us. Of course, Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. I'm your host, Terry Barr. Joining me today, I am pleased to welcome into our show, Kimberly Palmer. Kimberly is a personal finance expert with Nerd Wallet. Kimberly, thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me, Terry. It's great to be here. Oh, well, we have got the topic of identifying gaps when it comes to your money. I know this sounds serious, so don't get stressed out as you're listening. We're going to learn some things from Kimberly, starting with what's a money gap? What does that even mean? Well, I think we all have weaknesses or areas that we could work on when it comes to our personal finances. And sometimes we just haven't given certain areas of our finances attention. And so I think the first step is really to take a look at our strengths, our weaknesses, just to get a roadmap for ourselves of what we need to work on. And it can feel overwhelming. So this is all about breaking it into smaller steps. You don't have to do everything today, but just to get an idea of what you might want to work on over the next few weeks or even few months. Okay, just so everyone knows, I'm going to play along with this. I'm going to, there's a quiz you're going to tell us about. I'm going to take this, I'm going to do this and do all the steps along with everyone who uh, is part of our podcast community. So thank you. You're going to teach us a lot today. And when you're talking about those gaps, Kimberly, why would you say, you know, get going on it now? Why wait? Do it now. You know, we're at such an interesting time because hopefully the pandemic is coming to a close, or at least we're through the worst part. And the pandemic really changed so much about how we spend money, how we save money for a lot of us, how we're earning money. Of course, it had a huge impact on people's income and earnings. And it changed. It really turned our lifestyles upside down. So now as we're in this time of transition of things starting to open back up again, it's really the perfect time to take a pause and look back. Are there habits that you've developed over the pandemic that maybe you want to keep? For example, a lot of people noticed, hey, I'm saving a lot of money on not going out to restaurants or not traveling. And of course, we probably want some of that back in our lives, but maybe some new habits we want to keep. Maybe we've learned to cook more at home and that can generate huge savings, for example. And so I think it's just a really good time to take a pause right now and and just first look at how we are spending and how we want to be spending and reconciling those two things, which often means cutting back, making some cuts in our spending just so we can save more. Oh, I love that. Thank you. That, that makes such good sense. Okay. So we're going to get started right away. So how do we actually start trying to fill those gaps? What, what do we look at? How do we even do this? It's a good question. So the quiz that you mentioned, I think is a really great place to start because it just gives you that chance to do a self-assessment. So we have a quiz on our website. Basically, it just asks you questions like, what are your spending habits? Do you spend more than you earn? Uh, How, what are your habits when it comes to all of that, your personal finances? And it just gives you an idea of where maybe you want to turn your attention. For a lot of people, it comes down to just making some tweaks in their budget and then paying off debt. A lot of us are carrying around high interest debt from credit cards, for example. So making a plan to pay that off because the, the, paying that interest is such a drag on finances and very sure expensive. Is. And to find that quiz, just go to the Nerd Wallet website. Exactly. It's on our website. Uh, we actually adapted the quiz from something called the Financial Health Network. So if you want, you can just do a web search for nerd wallet and financial quiz, and you'll be able to find it. And it just walks you through a series of questions just to give you that chance to do a self-assessment. That is excellent. Okay. So savings and investing, um, that sounds simple, but that really is the best place to start and, and sort of do that assessment. Is that right? I think it is. And for me, one thing I always come back to is something called the 50, 30, 20 budget. We talk about it all the time. Mm-hmm at NerdWallet because it's just a really good place to start after you do that initial self-assessment and you think, oh yeah, I do want to make some adjustments. Just look at how you've been spending and see if it lines up against those categories. So just to briefly explain, that means 50% of your take-home pay is going toward needs. So that's of course things like your housing, whether you rent or mortgage payments, and then 30% is going towards wants. So that's the category like going out to a restaurant um, or travel. And then you want to have 20% for any debt payments that you're making, things like student loans, credit card debt, 
Uh, and then also savings. So that 20% encompasses both debt payments oh. and savings. And I think it's just a good thing to have as your target because then you can make sure you are having consistent savings and make some adjustments to those other categories if you need to. So it's almost like paying yourself but trying to remind yourself that it's actually savings, but you're, you're sort of paying yourself in that way, I guess. I mean, I love thinking about it like that because yeah. I mean, savings, it, it really, it's paying your future self. And so <sighs> it's putting that money aside. So, you know, you have it. And I think it can feel just as good as spending or, you know, get planning a vacation. So as long as you get in that mindset, that saving is something fun and it feels good. I think that can help. Oh, okay. So then we move on to, um, the basics, you know, for some people, this can be an even harder step, I think. You've got a lot in the basics. So uh, what should we, we be thinking about when we get to this step? Yeah, so we've already covered saving and budgeting, but the big mm -hmm. category here with basics is really thinking about planning for emergencies. And this came up, I think this hits home for a lot of us over the pandemic, because a lot of us did have to dig into emergency savings. There are all these unexpected expenses mm -hmm. that came up. And we actually found at NerdWallet, we did a survey and we found that a lot of people actually depleted their emergency savings if they were lucky enough to go into the pandemic with an emergency savings. Right. So that means now is the time to you know, think, what do I want if, if an emergency strikes again, if something happens again? And the answer for a lot of people is having that emergency fund set aside. And it doesn't have to be as overwhelming as it sounds. I know we often hear the numbers thrown around that you, know, you should always have six months worth of expenses that just is impossible or it seems impossible. So let's just start smaller. Start with say $500. Can you shoot for that by the end of the year? You know, putting aside some money each month and just taking those baby steps, I think makes, helps it feel more realistic. Mm. Uh, so that's something I love talking about. And also it just, it gives you that peace of mind. So, you know, you know, if suddenly your car has all these unexpected expenses yeah. or something else comes up, you know that you can pay for it without turning to something like expensive credit card debt. Absolutely. Oh my goodness. You know, the next step after you kind of get through some of the basics you've now mentioned talks about the idea of don't be afraid to keep learning and maybe educating yourself more about financial um, literacy. And, and what does that really mean? What, what should we be looking at next? It's a great question. I think that all of us are just constantly learning and partly it's because we're always having new life experiences. And so, for example, I know when I became a mom, I suddenly had to learn all about, you know, a whole new set of financial questions <laughs> when it comes to planning and, you know, ideally college savings, all these new questions came up. So I think every time we go through a new life situation, maybe mm -hmm. it's buying a house or you know, any big life stage, it's a good chance to learn. And I think it's also when you feel most motivated to learn uh, because you <laughs> yes. want to figure out, you know, what am I doing here? What do I need to do? And so I think using those, whatever life stage you're going through, just to, you know, even reading a book, reading articles, just constantly learning. And I really advocate for just talking more openly about money with friends, with family members. I think that can be a great source of information too. And there's certainly no shortage of information online if you have a question about something related to money. Um, so I just think it's being having that mindset really of constantly yeah. learning. You know, that's interesting you say talking with friends and family about money. Why do you think it's a topic that a lot of people don't even want to touch? <laughs> it can be so awkward. Yeah. And I totally understand that. Uh, but I also remember the first time I had an open conversation with my girlfriends about negotiating for our first job salary, it was like a floodgate opened. And we just realized, oh, we all feel awkward about this. And talking about it helps alleviate some of that awkwardness. And I think uh, the fact that we each talked about it with each other and had kind of like a practice conversation made it easier for us to go and have that conversation in the workplace. So I, I love getting rid of that stigma. You know, there's, we don't need to be embarrassed. We just need to realize we're all in the same boat mm. in a lot of cases. And oftentimes we all want to be spending less and saving more. And so if one person yeah. says, Hey, instead of, you know, going out and splurging on this expensive meal, why don't we do something else like a potluck? And often then it becomes something that you realize, Oh, everyone feels like this. And we don't have to be embarrassed about it. Oh, I love that. Thank you. Talk about it. Talk about it. <laughs> and then, of course, it kind of brings us full circle to the idea of 
don't wait. I mean, you and I are talking about this right now. We're, we're having a great conversation about money. Hopefully people are also enjoying the conversation. But when you and I are done, uh, we got to get started on something, right? I really think that, you know, it almost comes back to what we learn in elementary school. If you start saving early, it just, it compounds. You, you have your money growing faster. And then if you wait to start saving and putting money away, I mean, not just for retirement, but for all kinds of savings goals, then you, the more you have to save and the harder it is to catch up. So yeah. if you can just, you know, open that emergency savings account, or maybe your goal is different. Maybe it's finally opening up that retirement account. Mm -hmm. If you have that option through your, your job, for example, just getting started because the longer we wait, it just means we have to work harder to catch up. Right. And you know, there is something about that first step too. It almost makes you feel proud that, hey, I did this so I can do more. I can do more of what we just heard about. At, at least that's what I think, right? That's so true. <laughs> oh, I gosh. mean, there's momentum that builds up for sure. And so if you have a list, I mean, really, I think making that initial list of what you yes. want to do is in some ways the hardest step. So even if you just start with a list and even just writing down, I want to open that 401k, I want to start that emergency fund. I mean, that just gets the ball rolling. Mm -hmm. And then when you have a free half an hour, say, to actually go to your computer and open up an account and take the next step, you know, you do build up some momentum. And I think yeah. it's easier just to plow through that list. So and, if you do one thing, just make that list. <laughs> yes, it is. There's nothing better than crossing things off your list. So make the money list. Oh, what do we remind people about as, as we end today? And, and maybe there is only one thing that people can take away from this. We've talked about a lot of steps today. So what would you like to remind people as we say goodbye today? I think the big takeaway is to start small and don't let yourself be daunted or overwhelmed by some big overwhelming goal, like a, a number of how much you want to save. Just take the baby steps. And then at the end of the month, at the end of the year, you'll see how that all adds up and you've made significant changes in your life. And I bet you're going to be very proud of yourself when you do it too. It feels so good. It really <laughs> Oh my goodness, Kimberly Palmer. She is a personal finance expert with Nerd Wallet. Thank you so much for these steps to, uh, yeah, just kind of get rid of the gaps we have when it comes to money. Really important. It was so great to talk with you. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, you too. And uh, thank you for joining us for another Pennywise podcast from Lee Enterprises. You can find Pennywise anywhere you get your podcasts. And we, of course, would love you to listen and join us for our videos as well. I'm Terry Barr, and thank you for being here.